Hey guys, I know it's been a long time, but I'm back with a new review, this time for Resident Evil Revelations for the 3DS. <clears throat> In the Resident Evil canon, this game basically takes place between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. It mainly centers on Jill, Val Jill Valentine um, investigating a mysterious cruise ship that's called the Queen Zenobia drifting in the Mediterranean Sea. As I'm sure you can probably guess, there's some sort of zombie-like creatures involved. Uh, the peripheral plot also kind of involves like a feud between anti-bioterrorism organizations, the BSAA and the uh, FBC, and as well as a terrorist organization known as Veltro. As far as Resident Evil games stories go, this one's mostly coherent in the light of, you know, any other given game. This is pretty complicated and, I mean, it. I was able to follow it, or at least the gist of it, but as any Resident Evil fan knows, the mythology and the timeline is pretty convoluted and uh, this fills in like a few gaps, I guess, but doesn't, I feel like, give a whole lot of impact to the overall overarching story across all the games. However, what's there is has some really excellent pacing. The game, since it's portable, really um, gets a lot of success in its portable format. It actually cuts each section up into episodes. And each episode kind of like ends on like a cliffhanger, and then when you go to start the next episode, it'll say previously on Resident Evil, so if you haven't played it in a while, it gives you a nice refresher of all the major plot points up until that point in time. I really like that kind of episodic format for games. Uh, Alan Wake also did it. Well, it's not a portable game, but in a portable format, I think that works actually really well, because I was only playing this in, over the course of a couple weeks, about, you know, every other day or so. Um... The gameplay itself is, I think, a pretty good mix between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. Um, the sections where you're playing Jill are more survival horror, being on the ship. It's a creepy, kind of ambient atmosphere. Um, quick disclaimer, I've only ever played Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5 prior to this, so... that's I've enjo I enjoyed both, though, so take that for what you will. So, the Jill sections on the ship are a little more survival horror, while there's other sections where you'll play as Chris or a couple other different characters. They're a little more action-based, you get a little more ammo, it's not really about conserving, it's just about plowing through, killing as much stuff as you want. I think there strikes a pretty good balance between the two, and it makes it fun. And actually, Jill's uh, partner character, Parker, it, at least to me, is one of the more likable characters introduced in the franchise in quite a while, so I actually liked him. Everybody else was just kind of so-so. Uh, this plays about as well as... You know, Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5, if you didn't like those, then you're pretty much not going to like this at all. For only having one analog stick, still works pretty damn well. You can have the aiming in first person or third person. I chose first person. It's up to your discretion. Plays practically the same either way. There's several different control schemes. I stuck with the default. And then if you do have the Circle Pad Pro, which is an attachment that adds another uh, Circle Pad... Yeah, I think you can only get a GameStop that's like 20 bucks. I hear it makes it even better for play. I do not have it. I didn't have a problem playing this. Um, it controlled, you know, just like any other Resident Evil game. So if you're fine with other Resident Evil controls, then you're fine. Um, the one main addition that this game had, I think, was the Genesis Scanner, which is just kind of like a weapon, I guess. You don't really use it to fight, but... You can scan things in the environment to find hidden items or ammo, which is really useful because uh, you really have to conserve that stuff, at least in the stages where you're playing as Jill. And also you can scan enemies and once you get up to like 100% you get a free health item. Um, you can scan handprints in the environment to unlock uh, new weapons for this campaign and I believe the multiplayer raid mode. So I thought that was a welcome addition to the game. Um, the graphics in this are excellent as I think you can see from the gameplay. This is honestly the best looking handhold game I've ever played. Um, you know, maybe PS Vita games will take that crown, but it's really great looking. Animations are pretty good. The lip syncing's a little bit off, but again, this is a handheld game, so I could forgive that. Graphics are just great. The 3D effect is also really good. Um, however, for like, after like extended periods of time, uh, I would just kind of like turn it off. It's really good, but it also kind of like makes the 
lines of animation around the characters, a little more jagged, and it makes it a little bit blurry. So towards the end of the game, I found myself having it mostly off, but if you really like the 3D, it does really look good. Uh, while this does feel like a full-length console title, uh, there still are a few issues with it. it mm, some of these might be nitpicking more personal. For me, most of the boss fights go on entirely way too long. And, at least for me, my nerves are just shot at the end, which I don't know, maybe that's their goal. But if you're really not careful and you really don't use your ammo conservatively, it's like you could have totally screwed yourself over and basically need to start that chapter over. Because you can really screw yourself over by using too much ammo in the boss fights because they just are bullet sponges. You ready? And kind of on that note, the final boss fight just felt like, I don't know, out of place. It felt like the game was done, and then it just kind of throws another one in there. That might just be personal, but that's all I got to say about that. And then again, this is also kind of personal. The underwater sections, some of those enemies I found extremely annoying because you can't use a gun underwater. There's only a certain type of grenade that you can use underwater to kill them. And those are the most tense parts of the games for me. Again, maybe I'm just not as capable as some other people, but what do you do? I don't really have a whole lot else to say about this. This is a really fun, lengthy, portable adventure that is totally worth buying a 3DS for, I think. If you consider yourself a fan of the RE uh, Resident Evil series, totally get this. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to support more mature gaming on this console, buy it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.